Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hey everybody, what's up? And welcome to Seller Roundtable episode number 54. <laughs> Andy is out today, but you have your co-host, Amy Weiss here, and I am here with my dear friend and motivator of all things, Miss AJ Smith. Welcome, AJ. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. This will be fun. Yes, definitely. So we are going to talk about keeping joy, curiosity, and creativity in the heartbeat of your business today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and AJ and I were just talking before we hit the record button about how right now in the midst of COVID-19, people in their businesses are finding it really hard to get creative. They're finding it hard to get motivated to work on creative things in their business, to think about new product ideas, to think about new things that they could be doing. And I think, I mean, for me, I know I've had that that problem. And for me, the reason has been behind just not really knowing what the future holds. You know, you kind of feel stuck. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting today to talk about some things that we can do to cultivate creativity in a time yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. So AJ, tell us a little bit about you and, um, and your business and, uh, you know, a little bit about your background. Yeah. Um, so I'm AJ. I've been a professional mermaid for the last seven years as Mermaid Harmony. And now I own the company Enjoy Productions. And so I create sacred space for people, specifically women, most of the time to gather and learn together in intentional community. Uh, usually this looks like uh, red tents, like one evenings, or we do soul art workshops, which is kind of like a paint and zip, but like meditation. And then you paint what you have. Um, and then creative soul conversations where we kind of talk about sorting out your business and your life with how we can weave curiosity and joy. In. So kind of a few different things. And then I also do henna. Um, but yeah, I'm a military spouse. And so we've been traveling. We move every three years. And right now we're in San Antonio, Texas, which I am absolutely loving. feels like my soul's home or one of them, I suppose. I love a lot of places we've lived. So yes, definitely. And I got, I had the pleasure of meeting you when we were stationed in Hawaii and, yeah. um, and it was just a lot of fun to, you actually were the mermaid at my daughter's birthday party. <laughs> and I didn't even know that was a thing. You, you, did you hear that people, you can actually be a mermaid. You can make money being a mermaid. Yeah. So, you can be a mermaid and people will pay you for it. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> even sometimes I'd like, I'm just like, this, is this my life? This is, this is fantastic. Yeah. So AJ came over for, um, for my daughter's birthday party in Hawaii and, um, and she has the full mermaid tail. She had her, her, what it, we, she had the, her fish on that day and she was not, she did not have legs that day. So my tail was, and a shell bra. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was beautiful. And Thank the kids you. just loved it. I mean, mm. they were amazed with it. Um, yeah. and I love to see how you've taken that creativity of being a mermaid into this inspiring women, you know, mm. and and now you started doing these red tents and I went to one of your red tents and it was just such a cool experience because it was just a safe place for women to connect and to talk yeah. about whatever, you know, it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't about uh, worrying about all the things we have going on in our mm. lives. And, you know, us women, we kind of get into this thing where we kind of take care of everybody and, and worry about all the things. So uh, you know, I really enjoyed kind of being in that environment and connecting with other women without feeling all the pressure yeah. of needing to, to do all the things or, or have, or, or be somebody. Right. Um, so I love that. Uh, well, tell us a little about, you know, you also spoke at our inspire conference and you talked about really just kind of giving yourself permission to mm -hmm. be who it is that you're going to be. Um, so how are you coping right now with everything that's going on with coronavirus and how are you able to continue to be creative? Yeah. Oh, so many questions. I love it. Um, to answer your first question, you asked me about mermaiding translating to here and then I'll hit the Corona one if that works for you. Um, for mermaiding, when people hire a mermaid, 
they hire an escape from reality, like this moment where anything is possible and it's magical and the world is full of wonder and joy because mermaids exist and dragons and fairies. And the kids' eyes spark with wonder, but the parents' eyes spark with wonder as well. Like sometimes the mom was more excited than the kids because she's just like, oh, I don't have to, I can just be here. And I think all of us as adults, we're all craving those moments where wonder and possibility are more true in our lives than they feel like in our everyday reality. And the way that we live our lives has us so often looking at our to-do list and not like our soul's like, what would bring me joy today list or listening to the longing of what I call our soul soul song that's woven into your soul. Um, And we don't always have the opportunity to do that, right? Like sometimes we have to do the things that are on our list. Um, But for me, for other people, it might look two crazy different things like, oh, she was a mermaid and now she's like hanging out with women. Um, But both were places where people can come and feel loved and be, and they didn't have to do anything. Um, So that's the link for me is creating that that space of wonder and possibility again. Um, In Corona, it's been up and down. And I think anybody who says otherwise is lying or trying to sell you something, to be completely honest with you. Um, I've been very grateful for the support system that I've built around myself for the last five months. I've been going to SE, which is somatic experiencing. So it's like body, mind, trauma therapy and how your body stores memory. And, uh, and now she can do it virtually, which is really cool. Um, cause I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of processing we're doing. We're grieving as a country, as a world right now, like our lives are changing. People are losing their homes. People are losing their jobs. You know, events are canceled. Income canceled and it's a lot it's a lot to process so even though I can take my red tents online and I'm doing you know weekly online red tents we have a different theme as my way to kind of like give back to hold some support for people to process we're all processing in our own ways so I've seen a lot of stuff online that's like do all of the things and then people are like it's okay if you just brush your teeth today um but I think it kind of oscillates a bit before between the two you know, and sometimes they teach about menstrual cycles too. So if you're a woman, A, you're grieving. B, we're going through a pandemic. C, you most likely own a business if you're listening to this podcast. And so you have all these people that need things from you and your body cycling still. So you're going to have days where you feel super productive and on top of the world. That was me yesterday. I spent five hours on my website and I just got a bunch of things done. I was like, this is amazing. I am Wonder Woman. You know, and I went to my husband like, look at what I did. You know, but four days ago, I was like, we are going to read all day and have a margarita and end it with a hot bath. And it's, that's going to be enough. So I think reminding myself that we can have grace and I can have grace because I'm giving grace to a lot of other people, but I'm sometimes reluctant to give to myself, if that makes sense. So that's where I'm at right now. Thank you for asking. That's amazing. I, I love the thought of, you know, giving yourself grace and, letting the day be whatever it is, but also building up a support system around you. Yeah. So do you have any recommendations for other people that are maybe having a tough time? Um, you know, either maybe they don't have that support system or they're having a tough time just kind of feeling optimistic. Uh, do you have any recommendations for things people can do every day to help cultivate some joy? <laughs> Yeah, hundred um, percent. So I have a couple tools that I use every day that help me feel like I can show up to the best of my ability, or even if not to the best of my ability, but that it's going to be okay. Uh, the first one is I kind of have like an ish morning routine. Sometimes it takes me an hour. Sometimes it takes me three hours. Sometimes I finish in the evening and I'm like, ah, details. Um, but I write morning pages, which is based off of this idea from the artist way because the way our brains work is we're constantly processing information, right? And our brain's holding on to things that are like, you can't forget about this. You can't forget about this. You can't forget about this. And if you think about it, if you're just like loading your laundry basket with all of the things, eventually you're going to have an overflowing laundry basket. And then somebody's asking you to focus on something. And you're just like, I can't even, I have so much. Why are you even, I can't even think straight right now. Why are you asking this of me? And so morning pages is three pages of free writing in the morning, like one of the first things you do, I keep mine by the side of my bed and sometimes it's in my office. So sometimes I do it in bed, sometimes I do it in office. This is not a perfect thing that anybody does perfectly. Um, And you just write and you don't censor yourself and you just let whatever comes out on paper come out on paper. And sometimes you're 
kind of thinking about your day or you're writing, this is so frustrating. I hate morning pages. <laughs> what am I doing? Um, I usually like to write, uh, this is from the Start Today Journal by Rachel Hollis excuse me, um, where she has you write 10 pieces of gratitude. So I write those every morning of something in the last 24 hours that I'm grateful for. And then uh, 10 goals written in present form. And so those two things kind of get me present in, in my body of like, okay, this is where we're at in this moment. Here's what today looks like. Here's my goals. And sometimes the goals seem very far away, like especially during Corona, like there's things in my business and I'm like, yes, I'm going to accomplish this. And I'm like, I don't, I, can I just wear my pajamas today? So, um, sorry, you might hear my dogs. Um, do you want me to like move them? Are, are they like, sorry. they're like fighting right can now? Can you hear them? Yeah. Let me yeah. put them. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. So as far as, as far as, uh, you know, writing a, as far as writing in a journal every day, uh, I definitely do that during my meditation time to, um, no problem. I definitely do that during my meditation time to really um, get an understanding of, you know, kind of put it on paper. It helps to put it on paper. So you mentioned that you write 10 goals in the present, 10 present goals. Can you give me an example of what that means? Yeah, totally. Um, so my, here's a couple examples of my goals. Um, uh, my husband and I have a fantastic marriage. This is true currently, but like, it's also a goal I want to have. Like I want to continue to have fantastic marriage. Um, I travel around the world getting paid for my work. Um, I am the most intentional person I know. I lead sold out events in red tents and retreats. Um, so things like that. Um, I'm a paid published book author. I co-lead a sponsored podcast. Um, so things like so that, that it's like that, future goals, but I kind of say it like it's happening. This is my life. Got it. Oh, yeah. I was watching the movie, The Secret the other day, and I know it's a book as well. And it yeah. talks about um, the law of attraction and how if you have a goal of something, A, you need to write it down, hence mm -hmm. writing pages, right? Yep. But then the other thing is really visualize it like it's already yours. Like you mm -hmm. already have it because if you're wanting after it, if you actually can visualize it already being there you kind of put yourself in that moment. So I love how you're like, you know, I am a, a yeah. published author and I am these things. And I, you know, and even if you're wanting, if you are already those things, but yeah. you're maybe wanting to level them up, like I want to sell out, like yeah. instead of saying, I want to sell out my next event. You say, no, I do sell out events. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. Right? And I think, um, and I think manifestation gets a lot of flack and I give it a lot of flack too. Uh, but it's because people think like, if you just imagine it, it'll happen. But like what happens in your brain is like, you're visualizing this, you're writing it down. And then you're like, there's a disconnect between what's happening in my life right now and what I see. What are the steps to do that? So it's kind of like this incentive too of like, this is where we're moving forward because you know, you could go any which way. So it's kind of keeping you on track of like, this is what we're moving forward. This is why we're showing up today. Um, so that's, I write that first in my morning pages and then I just free write the rest because it helps kind of fill up a page. Um, so you and, said it's three pages and you start Yeah, three with... pages of free writing. And my journal is about, my journal is this size. Okay. So um, it's just three pages. And, and you, start have, with, you start with 10 things that you're grateful for. I do personally. You don't have to, but oh, I think it's very helpful. That's yeah. just your, your, yeah, starting with gratitude. Yeah. Thinking, wow. Like, yeah, I'm lucky for all of these things in my life, right? I'm yeah. happy to have mm -hmm. all these things. And then you personally then move on to, um, to 10 goals. Yes. That, that are present. Yes. Things that you're visualizing that you're already there and you're writing those things down. Now, mm -hmm. do you ever get to the point, I know some people, maybe the, let's say you wake up and you've just got a ton on your mind and you're not ready to focus on goals yet. Yeah. You just want to get, just let oh. it out. Yeah, totally. You can just, you can just free write. You don't have to do the goal stuff. That's just me combining two, two habits from people that I admire into one thing, like morning pages and the start today journal into all of my morning pages. But yeah, I've started, that's how I started my morning pages. I just free wrote three pages. But if you have like a journal that's this size, you could just do two pages. I mean, you can do three, but 
three might feel like a lot. So like whatever is accessible, like some people just start with one page, but because your brain's like, oh, it's written down. I don't have to remember it anymore. And it's not like anybody's reading it. And it's not a journal. Like this isn't supposed to be fancy, you know, like on December 31st, we had this wonderful, I mean, you can write that, but that's not the intention, right? The intention is just brain dumping so that you're like, oh, okay, I'm open. I can kind of take stock of what's around me and be present today and not having to remember all the other things. So that is a way of kind of offloading. And then, and, and how does that help you in cultivating joy? Yeah. Um, helps me cultivate joy because a stressed mind is not much help in cultivating joy. Um, because I feel like I can breathe after I do my morning pages and I don't think joy gets a lot of pressure alongside happiness to be this effervescent, like exuberant over the top energy. And I think, I think joy also looks like that, but joy also looks like contentment and joy looks like looking forward to things and being present in the moment where you're in. And so I think when we make joy or happiness look like just one type of thing and we're like, I'm not feeling like that today, then we're like, that's not accessible today. Does that make sense? So I think knowing that you can have joyful moments throughout your day and you can go up and down and be like, hey, like this is really good and I'm feeling really good. And then you can be low later and be like, okay, what is happening with my life right now? It's, it's okay. Um, but I think morning pages allows you that space to be present in moments, to appreciate them when they're happening. If your kids, you know, playing with bubbles in the backyard or reading together or having some time to chat with your spouse, like just these little things that when you have a little bit more brain space are more accessible. So Got it. And then I know right now a lot of people are struggling, myself included, they're yeah. struggling with goals. I think right my goals are pretty they're they're pretty big. They're Lofty. big goals, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I'm like, wow, you know, yeah, I want to sell this out. Yeah, I want to I want to do all these things. But right now during this time, I found it helpful to make smaller, more accessible goals for me. Mm. Like, yeah. okay, you know, I'm not really into dreaming about um selling out this event that I don't even know is going to happen, but yeah. I could be excited about just getting this done today. Like what's one thing that I can get done today that I can get, that'll be, that I would be happy if it got done, you know? So yeah, I would say like along with the, um, with the big 10 goals, like being present in your goals, mm -hmm. don't forget about like the smaller goals, right? Do you do that? Oh, sometimes? Like, do you just put like your top 10 to do list? That was actually a really gorgeous, uh, follow through. What do you call it? Um, segue. Cause that was going to be my second thing is I know it's Rachel Hollis again, but, uh, it's been saving me lately, this priority planner. Cause she has you write, you know, you have your big goal. So you pick one of your top 10 and then you pick three things that you can do today. What are three things on your plate that you need to accomplish? Um, and if those three things happen, you had a successful day. If those three things don't happen, you also had a successful day. Like you had a day, right? Like either way you cut it, you making it through right now with where we're at in the world, you making it through each day and choosing to show up, choosing to get out of bed, that's a win. Period, end of sentence, like, there's a lot of guilt growing around. We don't need to wear guilt or shame cloaks. Like, we just don't have time for it. We don't have time for it. And so for me, writing down three things, and usually one of them is like, clean the kitchen or go for a run or something that feels really accessible right now. And then the other two, like doing this podcast, that was one of my three things today. Donating blood was another one. Working on my, my website for a little bit, that was my third thing. So like that's, might not feel like a lot, but right now, like 10 things for me right now feels very inaccessible. Like that feels almost like too much. Will I do 10 things today? Yes, of course. Like, you know, we're going to take the dogs and walk. I'm going to do, but we have to remember that right now in this moment in time, April 14th, we're in the middle of pandemic. You're not working from home. You're working from home in the middle of a pandemic with kids, with not being able to go to the store when you're like, I'm stressed out and I just want a bag of Cheetos, you know, whatever. It's a very different thing and it's hitting your system differently. But even before the pandemic, I've been doing this for the last two months and having three things a day helps narrow my focus too. So I can be fully present because I get distracted easily. Um, and I think that's very easy for business owners to do because we're like, oh, there's so many things to do. Barbara, yes, 
but not all today. We cannot do everything today. That's why God made assistance. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> thank goodness you for can that. do. Yeah, <laughs> you can do three things today. And what are those most three important things? Maybe right now your business takes a a back seat because you're trying to be present for your family and keep everything together like that is okay it's okay if your business is not growing in the middle of corona like um on a podcast they were just saying like focus on what you can pivot and like put your attention towards that right now like if you're you're doing the business stuff like just assume this is going to last longer than it is because if you think like oh this will be done in a month and then it's not and you haven't planned ahead that's going to hurt so it's kind of like think worst case scenario with your business and then you can plan accordingly um, so that's kind of how I've been operating lately is like, okay, if X happens, how am I going to react? How am I going to show up? How can I help my people who follow me and who are in my community? Like, what can I do for them? And so that's how I've been doing my best to show up as a business owner as well. Yeah. So I think to summarize what we've talked about with cultivating joy right now is just taking the time each day to, yeah. to do things that help alleviate your stress like writing pages or yeah. starting the day with just naming things that you're grateful for and mm -hmm. focusing on smaller goals it's okay to focus on big goals too if you're all into your big goals absolutely what's wrong with visualizing that this pandemic is going to eventually end it yes. will and we will yes. get back to living again so there's nothing wrong with being present in those awesome goals that you have even the bigger goals but then it's also really great to make smaller goals that are very mm. achievable and accessible. And I think something that you said that really, I think will resonate with a lot of people and resonates with me is be present in the moment and let whatever it is be. Don't hold joy over your head and feel like, oh, mm. no, I, I, have, to, I Ooh, have to have that. happiness and I have to feel a certain way and I have to, mm. no, it's okay to, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to, you know, and, and just finding little moments where, wow, you know what? I feel better. I got, I, I wrote some stuff down, got it off my plate. I'm going to get a couple of things done today that are accessible to me right now. And yeah. I'm going to be okay with that. Mm. And if today yeah. is a Netflix day, today's a Netflix day. If tomorrow's yeah. a super productive day, yay for that too. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.